Okay, there's a few of us here. Uh, I'm just going to check if all of our speakers are here. Samantha, I think I've seen you here already. Hi, Samantha. Hi, Quentin. Uh, I haven't seen Rachel yet, uh, but I see Niluka, so we'll ask him to jump in if uh, Rachel doesn't make it. Uh, um, I can't in. Um, Rachel will not be joining today, um, and I'll be taking a place. All right, great. Uh, thanks, Niluka. And uh, I don't, I haven't seen Javier yet. Uh, Javier, are you are you here? I will take the, the silence for no, uh, but so we'll, uh, we'll perhaps keep a little bit ahead in the agenda uh, while he gets ready. Uh, okay, so I will just be sharing my screen. All right, uh, so welcome everyone on, uh, on the call today. Uh, we've named Advocacy Tool Highlight, which means that it's a bit of a hodgepodge of a few things uh, will be the idea being that this year is a replenishment year. Uh, we, it's going to be extremely busy for the rest of the month uh, as we come into a preparatory meeting and uh, all, of the, all that goes in the lead to that and all that happens after that. Uh, and so we wanted to get a chance to uh, take stock of uh, some of the things that we've been doing over the past uh, month to try to uh, to help you in uh, in your advocacy, but also uh, just general reminders on uh, on what are some of the tools out there that you that you can use in your work. Uh, I will go straight to the agenda. Uh, so we'll start with a couple of updates. Uh, we I was going to open with the introduction of uh, the new community delegation representative on the approval from the board, uh, Javier Bella, but I haven't seen him on the call yet, so I think we'll skip ahead and see when he arrives. Uh, if, Javier, if you're here, uh, do let me know. <laughs> um, then we'll talk about a project we've been working on for a long time, which is a, a new video that we just released. You may have seen it on the, on the networks. Uh, so it uh, features global speakers. Uh, and I uh, will quickly cover a new website, which uh, we find very pretty and we're very proud of. Um, after that, we'll have, a, we'll have a presentation by Friends of a Global Fight. Uh, they just released a new documentary and they will, uh, they will tell us about it and show us some, uh, uh, some samples. Uh, and finally, we'll uh, talk about a few upcoming advocacy moments. Again, it's going to be a busy couple of months. And so this is a number of general reminders. Uh, I think there's someone who's not new on the call. All right. Uh, and so with this, uh, assuming again that uh, Javier has not made it yet, I am going to uh, give the floor to my colleague Tara to tell us about uh, the on new, on new speakers video and uh, and how to best engage your speakers bureau. Tara, the floor is yours. Thank you, content. Okay, I'm I'm afraid I'm going to be tossing a lot of links into the uh, the chat. Um, so please have a look there. Um, but uh, we'll also share them after the call um, when we share the video um, the recording. So. Um, the Speakers Bureau, for those who aren't familiar with it, is um, uh, features people who have seen the impact of the Global Fund in their lives. Um, and we find that uh, those that have seen the impact in their own lives are the most impactful spokespeople for the Global Fund. And so each of our speakers are currently or have in the past access Global Fund supported programs. Um, and are advocates in their own communities for prevention, treatment, and or care for most for, for one or more of the three diseases. So they've either personally been impacted or their family has been impacted, um, uh, some, something along those lines. Um, over the history of our speaker program, GFAN speakers have participated in dozens of advocacy tours um, across continents and met with numerous parliamentarians, media, grassroots advocates. They have attended high-level meetings, global fund replenishment announcements, parliamentary briefings, and roundtable discussions, and have met with numerous politicians and de decision makers one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so they have been all over the world and 
advocating on behalf of the Global Fund. Um, we've also uh, had to kind of shift gears recently, um, as we all have, <laughs> um, and switch to more virtual. And um, speakers have uh, participated in conference calls, um, blog articles, newsletter content, uh, co-writing editorials featured in news articles, multimedia pieces. And the first of my links is coming in here. Um, we have also um, had uh, best practices. Um, so uh, that link there, it just shows a one, one example of one of our partners, um, how they use uh, the Speakers Bureau in a virtual environment to advocate directly with um, uh, decision makers um, uh, and politicians and, and making something so it wasn't just a panel discussion on a Zoom call. It was a little bit more interactive. So they had uh, breakout rooms. It's all explained in, in there and it'll do a much better job than I can uh, explain. So um, then we have, um, if you're wondering how to access the Speakers Bureau, um, you need to get a hold of me and um, I, will, I will get in, in touch uh, I'll get back to you and we will work out what speaker might best fit, fit the kind of uh, what your needs are. So, uh, and who's available to travel and, or who might be available at a certain time. And then I will help you figure that out. And then I will connect with the speakers and get that information uh, to them. And we'll, we can get, get it set up. Just, just general information. You can send me an email at Tara, uh, globalfundadvocatesnetwork.org, but all of the details of kind of what we need from the from you and what you can expect are all in, I'm pointing at the screen, that's not very helpful, <laughs> are all in uh, the link that I just posted. Um, it just, it's a, a whole toolkit that explains it all. Um, let's say you just want to use photos or videos of our speakers. Uh, we also have a user guide for that. The TLDR, the short, the short of it is that um, basically you're welcome to use our, our videos and photos um, for free as long as it's not for profit and as long as you give us credit. That's, that's the short version, but it's all explained in that link, all of the legalese and stuff. All of that, I feel like I buried the lead on this maybe, <laughs> but um, we are super, super pleased. We've been working on this for months and I wanna once again, thank the speakers who participated in this. Um, we are releasing a new speakers video for uh, the, seventh, the seventh replenishment and I've just posted the link there. Um, it is about eight minutes, seven, eight minutes long, I think. Um, and I, I would have loved to have just shown it to you all right now, but I think uh, we probably don't have time, but maybe at the end of the call content, if, if there's time, we could, uh, we could show the video um, if we run through things quickly. It's, 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 I think it's a, quite a powerful video and we're quite pleased. And I know that a number of our speakers are here and I can kind of give themselves a bit of an introduction. Uh, so I thought I would just turn it over to them and just so that they could say a few words. Um, so I, I have I've seen pop up Crystal, Anton, Miranda, Miriam, Ani, and Olya. So if anyone else is on, just please raise your hand and we'll make sure to get on. But why don't we start with Crystal? Do you want to say hello? Um, yes. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Crystal. I'm from Uganda, and uh, I am very passionate about the malaria elimination and definitely about raising money so the Global Fund can continue doing the amazing work that it's doing in Uganda, saving millions of lives, including mine. Thanks, Crystal. And Erin, I see you there. So why don't I just uh, swing over to you? I've lost Erin. There you are. Aaron, your video, your, your video is uh, not coming through very well. Maybe if you just put it on audio, you don't have a great connection. Hello. 
Hello, can you hear me? We, we can almost hear you now, Aaron. Oh, I think the network, I mean, I'm, I'm in effort and then there's limited internet access. So, but um, maybe I can just drop it on the chat. Is that okay? That, that would probably be work much better. Thank you. Uh, um, Miranda? Hi, everyone. I'm sorry I can't turn on my video um, outside. I'm actually outdoors. Um, <laughs> I'm Miranda and I'm based in Cape Town. I'm very much passionate about HIV, TB, and malaria, especially um, advocating for the Global Fund to support these cause, especially among adolescent girls and young women. I'm also, I'm also a Global Fund advocate speaker, and I'm pleased to be here. Nice to meet you all. Thanks, Miranda. Miriam? Hi, everyone. I'm Miriam from Zambia. I'm a health care provider. Um, I'm so passionate about malaria because I've seen so many lives um, saved due to the global fund. That is the lives of many patients that I've attended to, and also the life of my my, my firstborn child who had almost died due to um, severe malaria. But now she's fine. She's even doing her grade ten thanks to the global fund. And I would just like to uh, to urge all of you to continue supporting the global fund because it is still saving more lives. Thank you. Thank you, Miriam. Um, Anton? Yeah, hi, everyone. S sorry, it's not, it's, not, it's not the very best position <laughs> to speak now. I'm, yeah, yesterday I've been hospitalized with my son to, yeah, so, yeah. Sorry, Anton Basenko, originally from Ukraine, uh, now based in Brussels in Belgium, um, person living with HIV, almost 20 years, uh, also with experience of Hep C and representing the community of people who use drugs on different levels. Uh, as I always say, like, I'm a, in some sense, I'm a product of the Global Fund, uh, especially of the harm reduction and substitution therapy programs, which was funded many years in Ukraine exclusively by the Global Fund. Uh, that's kind of my uh, motivation. And uh, as, as of now, I'm also really serious about uh, things like quality of life, people living with HIV, mental health issues, uh, aging issues, uh, and of course, everything what is uh, common for people who use drugs like criminalization, stigma, discrimination. Um, yeah. Thanks. Take care, Anton. Nice you. Thanks, thanks. Um, Olya? Uh, thank you, Tara. Hi, all. I'm Olya Klimenko from Ukraine. I'm a TB survivor and represent TB community from uh, European Regional uh, Human Rights Activist. Uh, and uh, I'm happy to be with Jafan team. Thank you. Thanks, Olya. And uh, Ani, I think I saw Ani. There you are. Yes. Hi, everybody. My name is Ani Arnazadi. And I am from Surabaya, Indonesia. I am a TB survivor and also a GIFA new member. And I'm really <laughs> amazing to see myself in that video. Thank you, Global Fund. Thanks, Ani. Um, I, I think that's all of them. I, I don't see anyone else on that, that I've seen. So I think um, I hope you'll all take an opportunity to to watch that video um, and hear some of the speaker's stories and um, make use of uh, of of the tool and um, again just contact me I'll put my email into the chat for you uh, and I'll send it back over to uh, content thanks a lot Tara uh, and thanks for all the speakers who, uh, who all made it to almost all made it to the tool today uh, thanks for taking the time. Uh, so I still have you arriving on the call. So uh, if I can go back to, uh, uh, so Javier, are you, are you still here? Yes, I am. Sorry to join later. Ah, no yeah. worries. Uh, I'll give you the floor then. Uh, Javier Belloc is the new communities delegation representative on the Global Fund Board. And can you tell us uh, 
what was your journey to make it to the board and uh, what are your priorities for the four years ahead? Sure, I will try to be brief. Um, I, I was part of the inception of or the creation of, of the board representing uh, GMP Plus, the Global Network of People with HIV. Um, and this will be the second term serving as a board member with a break in between. Um, uh, of course, we have been working always with uh, Shifan very closely. Um, we um, believe that Shifan is an amazing movement to support from the civil society and the community's effort to uh, fully replenish the global fund. And this um, replenishment cycle will not be the, the exception. Uh, along, the, along the line also, we as a delegation, we will have a retreat and we also plan and engage with the global facilitator to have some activities that may be led by the community delegation, but that will not compete with our uh, full engagement with uh, Shifan. Um, and as you see, we do have ambassadors that also are members of the community delegation for a while. Um, yeah, that's for now. I think that um, when we have a better clarity around, of course, um, we are now looking into what will be the priority issues around the new strategy, stuff like that. But of course, the global fund replenishment is one of the main priorities for this year for the community delegation. And we may probably get to, together with the Shifan team um, to, to exchange ideas and see how we could better uh, support you guys uh, and your amazing job. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Javier. Uh, for, for everyone on the call, uh, don't, don't hesitate to drop in questions or raise a hand at any point if you have uh, anything you want to say to some of our speakers. Uh, but I will take everyone's silence as a sign that everything is extremely clear. Uh, and I will uh, quickly move on to uh, the other very exciting update for us, uh, which is that uh, web GFAN has a new website. Uh, so uh, you have a screenshot here, uh, on, but the, the website is the same, uh, meaning that the address hasn't changed. It's a port of the old website. So every doc, any document that you are using is still up there. Uh, it's just like, it's a lot easier to navigate. And if you ask me, a lot easier to look at. Uh, the problem was that the old website was starting to show its, its age and, uh, you know, it was it had been done a few years ago. Uh, he had grown a lot. And I think one challenge was that there were a few things that were quite hard to find. Uh, and so this has been really an opportunity for us. And by us, I really mean Tara, who has been putting a lot of work into this uh, to, to really rebuild it from, uh, from the ground up uh, in terms of the structure and how to find files on the website. It's been streamlined. It's a lot better now. Uh, and in particular, I want to point out two things that you can now find very easily. Uh, you can join the listserv by just clicking the join GFAN huge button we've put uh, in front. Uh, because I think Tara and I probably get a request uh, a request a week on how to join the how to join GFAN. So now hopefully that won't happen. Uh, and you can uh, and this is a reminder as well that uh, all the all we post on the website all the recording of these calls and uh, and all the notes. But they were not the easiest to find in the past. And, uh, and now I think we've addressed that. It's, it's just mm. up in the menu, it's easy to find. Uh, so yeah, so we, we hope uh, it shouldn't make, it should just be a straight up improvement. You haven't lost anything. Uh, yeah. And the website is now, is now online. Someone, uh, someone's not muted. Uh, hi, Michael, are you, uh, are you trying to jump in or? No, okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, all right, and so that's it. Uh, that's it for for our updates. If uh, any of you has any question uh, on the, I mean on the website, I don't know what the question would be, but I'm ready to take them. Uh, or on the uh, or on the speakers, uh, don't hesitate to raise your hand and let us know. And otherwise, I will uh, I will give the floor to uh, Samantha for oops sorry uh, Samantha for her presentation about the new documentary by Friends of a Global Fight. Sure. Thank you, Quentin. Um, bear with me one moment. I'm going to, oh, I looks like I can't share my screen. Okay, now I can share. Oh, exactly. <laughs> um, bear with me one moment while I um, pull up the screens to share. 
Um, it's nice to, to meet everyone on the call. Um, my name is Samantha Majerus. I do communications for um, Friends of the Global Fight. We're based in Washington, DC. Um, and we're really thrilled to share with all of you today um, a new documentary that we've been working on over the last nine months with, um, with the rest of the, the Friends of the Global Fund um, network. Um, so with Friends Europe and Friends Japan as well. And thanks to, um, to GFAM for letting us, um, we thought we would share, Quentin, do we have time to share about two, three minutes of the film? Okay, so um, I'll go ahead and um, play the film um, and then my colleague Brendan will drop in the full length, the full um, video is about um, 12, to 12 and a half minutes. En tant que femme leader, je combat, je mène un grand combat pour que les femmes là, les enfants là qui souffrent, qu'on puisse les aider. Il n'y a pas de mal. Il n'y a pas de mal. Il n'y a pas de mal. C'est dû à une moustique. Un insecte tout petit. C'est mortel. Il y a beaucoup peur du palus. Il n'y a pas de mal. 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 Oui, il y a des centres de santé qu'on peut se faire soigner. Mais si on n'y a pas d'argent, on ne peut pas le faire. Vraiment, je défie ça. Quelquefois, on amène l'enfant. Cinq minutes après, il meurt. Ils ont gardé ça à la maison. Ils n'ont pas les moyens. Tout cela. Les fonds mondiaux nous a aidés. Nous amenons des moustiquaires, des comprimés contre le palu pour les enfants de trois mois à cinq ans. Il faut chercher les moustiquaires pour dormir. Mais dormir à l'air libre, ce n'est pas possible. Notre grand souhait, c'est que d'ici 2030, que nous nous retrouvions avec un Niger sans palu. Ça ne peut être une affaire du Niger, c'est une affaire de, de l'Afrique essentiellement et du monde en général. Pour l'avenir, ce que je souhaite, ce que je pense, ce que je veux, que le palu soit éradiqué dans notre pays à jamais. J'aimerais que nous soyons déterminés. So that um, gives you sort of a flavor. Um, the rest of the film goes um, after looking at um, malaria in Niger. Then we go to um, then we go to Indonesia to look at TB, um, and then we end in Malawi, focused on HIV. Um, and I'm going to try to. I have a. travail. <laughs> I have a slide deck. Let me just switch to sharing my slides. Bear with me one second. Um, okay. Femme, sois fière de notre travail, du combat que nous menons. Tout cela nous manque, mais malgré tout, je fais un combat. Nous faisons un combat. Nous combattons. Let me exit out of the video so that um, that noise doesn't. Okay. All right. Can everyone see the slide deck now? 
Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. Um, so, you know, as I was saying, um, you know, the film goes to um, Niger and Malawi as well. Um, so we just started, um, we just put this on our website the end of last week. Um, what's next? We're going to be sharing this with um, U.S. members of Congress. Um, you know, we thought now would be a good time a couple weeks before the investment case. It's just um, you know, this is a more of an educational piece um, about where the money um, has gone so far and the impact of the global fund. Um, as I mentioned, we developed this content with Friends Europe and Friends Japan, um, and they're currently working on tailoring and translating versions for France, Germany, Italy, Spain, and Japan. So those, um, you know, other four um, language versions will be available. Um, and we paid for access to all the, the raw footage. We're developing separate video files for um, each country and disease because I know some advocates um, you know, are, are more focused on one disease. Um, and we're really hoping that this can be a content library going into replenishment. So we have access, you know, you saw there's only a few uh, minutes of, of coverage from each country, um, but we did five days of filming. <clears throat> and in some cases, there were people we interviewed that didn't make it into the US version of the film. Um, for example, in, in Malawi, um, we, we have some interviews with sex workers that are going to be in the Friends Europe and Friends Japan. And we have access to the transcripts as well. As well. Um, the, um, you know, the Indonesian version talks a little bit about health security and pandemic preparedness and how the gene expert machines have been used um, for TB and for COVID-19. Um, so I, I just wanted to make sure um, the whole GFAN community knew about this resource and we're really open to collaboration and brainstorming and, and sharing um, the content if, if anyone has um, other ideas about how, how we can use this content during um, the, the replenishment campaign this year. Um, so here and we'll go ahead and drop it into the chat function. Um, the, the link to the full film, and then we also have a tweet and a, a trailer, and we'll be developing um, additional content for social media over the next few months as well. Um, <clears throat> so I'll stop um, the slideshow um, and just open it up. Does anyone have any um, initial um, questions or ideas about how we, how we could use this for the replenishment campaign. Um, and I will go ahead and, oh, I see a hand raised. Um, Hi, yeah, this is Anna Marie. Hi, how are you doing? Thank you so much for sharing uh this new content fantastic just um useful to know that the uh the content and the raw footage might be made available i just wondered whether you had plans already for shorter format films obviously that long context one can be great in some uh settings but it's quite long for quite a lot of uh, advocacy contexts and and outreach as well thanks over uh, thank you no it's a great point um and so we are going to be um, so we will have versions of the, the video that are about three minutes. So for, you know, one for each disease or country. And then, you know, for social media, um, you know, we'll be cutting um, even shorter ones that are more social media friendly. So we'll be working on that in the next couple months as part of the replenishment campaign. Completely um, agree that for um, a, lot, a lot of advocacy purpose, having the, the shorter versions, especially for social, are, are great. Um, and, and we'll, um, you know, we can we can share those on the G Fan listserv once we we have those, and we'll be putting them out our on our um, Twitter uh, feed as well. Um, all right. Well, unless there are any other questions or ideas, I'll also drop my email address in the chat box. So if anyone um, has any. Um, other ideas or questions you want to discuss out offline, happy to do that. Uh, thanks, a lot, I want to I want to push everyone to call a bit on this because uh, I think it's been something that uh, we faced as well with our video in terms of creating short content. Uh, is that is that something that that everyone finds useful and had like? Can you tell us about how you use it? Like, do 
Uh, do many of you, for example, put some of that stuff on TikTok? Should we think of adapting some of our content for that kind of platform? Like what kind of length uh, would be relevant to your work, et cetera? I want to get an idea of uh, from everyone on the call of, of yeah, what what is the demand exactly? What when we say shorter format, what what do we mean by shorter? Yes, so, uh, have it. Go ahead. Yeah, I have it. I think congratulations. I think it's a great piece. Uh, of course, it's very useful for some stakeholders to keep it like that. Uh, and, and shorten, I mean, sometimes we are um, around one, one minute and a half, especially because we want to support this campaign through social media. Um, I know it will be a challenge because it's quite comprehensive and I really love the, the piece I look like, uh, but it will be great if we could have, I don't know how, um, a, a shorten piece, no, no larger than two minutes because it's, you know, that's what social media requests. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And I, I see another, another hand raised. Go ahead. Hi, I think that's me, Anna Marie again. Uh, yeah, I was just going to support that. And I'm not a, a, a comms expert, but having worked with a lot of them, uh, 60 to 90 seconds is generally the kind of um, rule of thumb in, in many things for social media, but also for events. If you're doing events with parliamentarians or other decision makers, you often got speakers and it's really helpful, particularly when you're not able to bring people like the, the speakers bureau speakers there in person to be able to show some of the content but attention spans are short and time is short. So where it is possible to do something like 60 to 90 seconds, that's that's really useful. And particularly when you can then link people to the longer film if they want to see more as well. Thanks, Eva. All right, thanks a lot. Uh, no, this is useful. Um, I, I always worry that even that even a minute is uh, is already too long. You know, if in fact if you're looking at things yeah anyway so it's good to know that like the, the under two minute mark is seems to be it's what we're targeting for our videos and uh, for shorter ones and i think I'm, I'm glad to hear that's that's about the kind of format that that people are using uh if there's no other comment on this uh thanks a lot to uh to friends of the global fight and samantha for joining us on the call and presenting the video which is really great uh and must have been a ton of work so thanks a lot for that I will put my share my screen again. All right, I will uh, and we'll move on with the uh, with the agenda. Oh, you see now the black screen. This is amazing. Ah, hey, there we go. Uh, so uh, next step with our with our agenda is uh, a short update on our sign on letter. Uh, during the last call, we uh, we asked uh, we, we we presented uh, our seven thing, uh, seven things for the seventh replenishment, which has since been renamed uh, seven asks for the seventh replenishment, which makes if you ask me a lot more sense. Uh, and I forgot to update that slide, but uh, but so we've been extremely impressed with the response to the letter. Uh, I really want to thank everyone on the call. Uh, we had over 140 unique signatures uh, on the on the letter. I just went through the list, so we won't be taking any more. Uh, so this is not a call for action. It's just a, a call to thank you all for the great work at amplifying uh, the message. Uh, on the screen is just a very short uh, summary of the content of the letter. The letter itself is about a, a page and a half. Uh, we will be releasing it very shortly, if not tomorrow by Friday. Uh, and we'll, uh, and alongside a cover letter that will contextualize, uh, uh, just give broader context on the on the content of the letter, because we we try to keep the letter as short as possible, and so uh, we we yeah it'll be part of a of a somewhat bigger piece. Uh, and we'll also release a couple of uh, assets uh, for social media alongside the letter to help amplify the message. You can see uh, one of them moving on the screen. Uh, we'll have a couple for, uh, for so that gift for Twitter and Facebook and, and a still version for Instagram. Uh, so we want to really want to thank you for uh, not only for amplifying, but also for doing it so quickly. Uh, we had most of the signature within uh, three, four days of the call. And, that means that the letter will be ready to uh, to release by the time 
the investment case is out, which was, uh, which was the point, uh, since the objective is, of course, to influence the investment case uh, and the paper to me. Uh, so I want to really thank everyone for your efforts. Uh, tell you that we're, we're just extremely happy with how that turned out. Uh, and uh, yes, so it'll be, it will be coming out in the, uh, in the next couple of days. Is there, is there any questions on the letter or can I, can I move on? Is it too late to add your signature to the letter? It's not too late, I would say. Uh, that just means I need to, to, to uh, update the list of uh, who should. Anyway, yes, all right, give me more work in front of everyone now, I can't escape. Uh, but yeah, no, of course, it's not too late. It's not too late to, uh, to, to sign on to the letter. Uh, so if you haven't, please do so. Uh, but please do so today <laughs> because, uh, because we, need to, we need to format everything, uh, et cetera. Uh, Peter, I see, are you going to work with a document? Uh, so the idea, of, uh, the idea of the letter is that it will be shared uh, with, uh, mainly with a global fund secretary. Uh, the idea, again, is because we're, we're, targeting, uh, we're targeting the investment case. Uh, it's already, it was, but it's as, as much, I would say, to, uh, uh, as a tool to, to sort of bring specific issues uh, to attention to the secretary, as well as to, uh, to you know, get, the con get a number of conversations started uh, among civil society. And so what we were really happy to see is that it has already triggered, I think, important conversations uh, with some of the partners. Uh, we've mostly found uh, we've mostly found support for the letter, which I think is is also reassuring. We see that there's uh, perhaps not as much uh, work that we feared. I think in uh, in terms of getting everyone to uh, to have uh, align uh, align priorities. Uh, but there, yes, so I think the uh, so the uh, so the will be uh, uh, sorry. I'm just getting a. a no, so the letter will be shared with the secretary, and uh, and I, and it's already been, I think, the, the start of a number of conversations that I think have been very fruitful and very useful. Uh, yes. Now, I will be moving on unless anyone else wants to to take the floor. Thanks, Peter, for your question. Okay. Uh, Moving on. So now we'll have a, a few updates uh, in the, the last bit of the call on uh, the so the preparatory, meet, the preparatory meeting and the GFAN week of action. Uh, we've had a lot of questions around the week of action. Part of it has been because uh, you know our plans uh, our plans are just solidifying now, uh, and so we'll try to to keep everyone up to date now on uh, uh, what we what we are planning, uh, how it will look like, etc. But first, a quick update on the preparatory meeting. Uh, so as you know, it will take place on February 23rd and February 24th. Uh, it will be a virtual event. Uh, it is being hosted by five countries. Uh, I will try to now remember them without my notes. Uh, we have uh, Senegal, Rwanda, uh, South Africa, Kenya, and and the last one, which I, and thank you, DRC. and DRC. Uh, and so we, the, the event itself uh, is invitation only, and there will be a limited representation of civil society during the event. Uh, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit sad because in previous, uh, in the last, in the last few ones, because the event was, uh, was in person, there were opportunities to meet before and around the event, and that won't happen this time. Uh, but GFAN Africa has been coordinating to prepare uh, uh, to prepare pre-meeting for uh, to help some of the some of the civil society members that will be attending uh, to be ready for the call. I think I saw Rosemary on the call. Rosemary, do you wanna do you wanna give everyone a quick update on uh, on your plans for the uh, for the engagement of the preparatory meeting? If you're still here. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Please. Continue. The floor is yeah, yours. I'm here. Yeah, so very quickly to just share um, uh, some of the work and organizing that is going on uh, that GFAN Africa is leading, of course, with support from GFAN Secretariat and GFAN Asia Pacific. So on our end, uh, we are supporting the five countries, as mentioned by Quinten, um, we have two Francophone countries and activities 
and coordination in those countries, that is Senegal and DRC, is being coordinated by Impact Center Africa with Olivia's leadership there. And we are leading on um, the three countries in the Anglophone region, South Africa, Rwanda, and Kenya, but working collectively to put together a regional approach that includes um, civil society and community mobilization in the lead up to the preparatory meeting in those five countries. Um, the, the first set of meetings, there, there will be about um, four meetings and the first set of meeting, the first meeting will be on the 15th, uh, which is next week. We anticipate that by that time, maybe we will have had a bit about or like a summary of the investment case. Um, so fingers crossed on that. And this first meeting on the 15th is, is a smaller group of, of GFAN uh, members specifically looking at those of you who are in the Global Fund delegation, the different delegations, um, but also US advocates, uh, representatives from uh, the five countries, you know, our colleagues who are leading work in those countries. Uh, coming together to begin to prepare, you know, ourselves for the preparatory meeting, uh, share information and perspectives, and to actually help us build a common understanding about the investment case, depending on where the update will be at that time. But also in that meeting, we hope to begin to put together some key messaging and a civil society uh, statement on the investment case that we will then share during the preparatory meeting. Um, and then also discuss a few uh, post-preparatory meeting kind of activities. There has also been um, quite a bit of building of allies, especially with members of parliament. We have had quite a number of briefings for MP engagement uh, and also media engagement. And each of the countries, so our colleagues in the five countries, uh, organizing national meetings uh, from the 16th to the 18th. So some colleagues are selecting the 16th, others are going to have their meetings on the 17th. So for example, you find that our colleagues in Rwanda will be having their national civil society and community engagement meeting on the, on the 17th or the 18th. In Kenya, it's going to be on the 16th. In Senegal, it's the 17th. So there's a list of are the dates where colleagues from each of the countries have and have planned. Um, the way these in-country or national meetings are structured is that there will be high level sessions uh, with civil society and communities engaging the ministries of health, engaging with allies, members of parliament and media. And the purpose of these national meetings is first of all, to, to thank our countries for their leadership, to, for stepping up and co-hosting uh, the preparatory meeting, but also to amplify this role. Like, what does it mean for Kenya to host this meeting? What does it mean to co-host this meeting for Rwanda, for South Africa? And also begin to speak to the, to the messages that are in support of the Global Fund replenishment, uh, talking about the impact of the Global Fund over the last 20 years, talking about the 44 million lives. So really positioning uh, the Global Fund as, as a great partner in responding to HIV, TB, malaria, and health systems, but also uh, deliberate and amplify the role of implementing countries in the lead up to the preparatory meeting and beyond all the way to the, to the replenishment. There is going to be an Africa regional meeting on the, sorry, on the 21st of February uh, and, and the 22nd, and then later on, later in the day, uh, on the 22nd is going to be another um, global advocates uh, kind of session coming together. You know, uh, the delegations to the Global Fund, different speakers, um, uh, US advocates, uh, representatives from the five African countries and the GFAN family from Asia Pacific, Africa coming together um, to have uh, sort of like a town hall discussion uh, with Peter. We hope we can have that, you know, just on the eve of the preparatory uh, meeting. And then there, uh, finalize our strategy, our statement, and be ready for the actual preparatory, and also execute something right after the preparatory meeting. So Quentin, that's the, um, I would say, um, highlight, just, I guess, top level, 
kind of highlight. There, there are so many details, especially at the country level. So what I would say if, if, if colleagues here are working in any of the countries here in the region, uh, feel free to reach out. In each of the countries, we have a team leader uh, who is a GFAN member based in that country that is helping with the mobilization. If you would like to connect in any of those countries, feel free to, to reach out. That would be very much appreciated. Quentin, over. Thank you so much, Rosemary. I'm just gonna leave the floor open for anyone who would have questions for Rosemary or more generally about the, the preparatory, preparatory meeting and the civil society engagement, because now would be now would be the time. All right. Uh, you can also pop it in the chat uh, if you're if you where your internet connection is too is too weak. Uh, then I will leave it now since I don't see any questions, uh, and we'll move on to uh, to the next item. But if you have any questions, just uh, raise your hand, and we'll uh, we'll give the floor back to Rosemary. Uh, so thanks again, to Rosemary. Uh, so the everything that is happening around the preparatory meeting is uh, is probably what's most uh, most urgent. The the other big event for us that, uh, that is coming up is, uh, is the GFAN week of, uh, Global Week of Action. Uh, we are so very excited about, uh, about that and the, the events will be coordinated by uh, GFAN, uh, GFAN Asia Pacific. And so uh, I will give the floor to Niluka uh, to present uh, some of the, like to give everyone an update on where we are, what, we, what we're planning, etc. Niluka, floor is yours. Yeah, thanks, Quentin. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Neluka, and I am with GFAN Asia Pacific. I'm based in Colombo, Sri Lanka. Um, so the Global Week of Action, um, uh, we are planning to launch this and have our colleagues participate in this uh, in the week starting from the 7th March. Uh, in 2019, uh, uh, in the uh, replenishment campaign that uh, GFAN Asia Pacific implemented, one of the key elements was um, um, the Love More, Give More campaign. Some of you might have already heard it and seen, seen that. So part of the Love More, Give More campaign was actually reaching out to embassies of donor countries, high commissions of donor countries in the implementing countries, um, you know, uh, with, with two key objectives. One is to thank them and appreciate their contributions uh, to the Global Fund and the change that it has uh, made over the years and also to ask for increased and early pledges. And something that we learned during that time was um, the power of the diplomatic channels. Um, so the messaging going to capitals of donor countries through the embassies. And um, we were aware that some of the capitals already knew about the campaign and our colleagues meeting the um, embassies at the country level. So uh, we started it in 2019 as an Asia Pacific campaign, but our colleagues across the world picked it up which is really great. Um, so from the top of my head, um, we've, uh, we've sent and uh, we've sent actually more than 550 letters to different embassies around the world uh, and more than 50 in-person meetings with the embassies. So this year with GFAN, GFAN Africa and GFAN Asia Pacific, we are planning on the Global Week of Action. Um, similar to what we did uh, in 2019, it's an effort um, to meet uh, with embassies of donor countries, uh, high commissions of donor countries in the implementing countries mostly. Uh, and um, we are trying our best to see the best options given the COVID-19 situation, uh, a mix of online, offline events, uh, most probably in, in the countries. So in preparation for this global week of action, uh, GFAN Asia Pacific is currently putting together a package of materials, including draft tentative agendas, request letters, uh, a brief on the replenishment and on the global week of action, a set of key messages, um, taking key messages from, uh, from the uh, reports and materials we already have, including the get back on track report from uh, GFAN, which was uh, the previous uh, get back on track uh, report, which was uh, a really great material uh, uh, strategic information report that we used during the 29 campaign. Um, um, so all of that is now being prepared and we will be ready to share that with our colleagues next week. Um, we will also be reaching out to our colleagues in donor countries to cross check on key messages for each country. We've 
had a round of calls early, um, uh, late last year with our colleagues, especially in the UK, in Australia to see, um, and also in France to see what are the key messages, uh, timelines for each country, and we will be doing that exercise um, um, for, for with other countries as well. We are also putting together a set of letters um, uh, uh, addressed at each donor country, and this is where we need our, uh, the support from our do, uh, colleagues from donor countries to um, uh, identify the key messages. Um, uh, uh, our intention is that um, our colleagues uh, in implementing countries will be able to set up uh, meetings with embassies uh, and, and uh, present the key messages from uh, get back on track report as well as from the global fund investment key. Uh, in preparation for all that, uh, GFN Asia Pacific will be uh, organizing a, a, a meeting um, in collaboration with GFAN and GFAN Africa on the 4th of March, um, just to um, uh, prepare our colleagues and, and highlight the key messages that will go into uh, the Global Week of Action. Um, I'll stop there. Um, more information will be coming in your way in the next few days, and I'll be more than happy to take any questions. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Nuka. It was, uh, was really helpful. Uh, is there is there any question about the about the Global Week of Action for for Nuka or for ourselves? Yes, James, go ahead. Uh, hi, everyone, and uh, thanks for the um, update, Nico. I think it's uh, super exciting and um, looking forward to um, supporting any way we can um, as the uh, the UK um, group with it. Just a couple of questions. Um, as my colleague uh, Jake um, is in touch with some of our partners in the UK and sort of think planning around how we can best support um, here. Is it still helpful for us in uh, donor countries to also think about us meeting other donors in London um, and other embassies um, as well? Because um, we are thinking of sending out some uh, letters um, to request meetings with some of our youth um, and uh, grassroots activists um, to both other key donors and talk about their replenishments and obviously in coordination uh, with other uh, national campaigns, but also us reaching out to um, um, implementing countries as well um, to um, talk about their support as well um, and happy to help um, with any way I can with uh, messaging um, for the uh, the UK. Uh, the one issue for us in the UK um, which we can speak about offline is that we haven't got our financial ask for the UK as yet. We're waiting for publication of the investment case um, but hoping to have our ask uh, confirmed um, on the uh, 21st um, so if we could hold off by including financial targets for the UK in stuff around the day of action until then, um, that would be appreciated. Um, and finally, I just wanted to ask around uh, media and comms plans um, for the week. Would you be looking to do like a global press release um, on this and to do uh, media engagement um, in all countries um, that's taking place in? Or would you be wanting us um, in the UK and other markets um, to be doing that as well? thinking for you can have a few stories that might work for uh, UK press and um, both highlighting actions taking place in London um, but also highlighting hopefully um, actions taking place in um, UK embassies and other countries um, as well. Uh, thank you. Thanks a lot James. Uh, Nino, can you want to perhaps answer that and then we'll take Peter's question? Um, sure. Um... Yeah, um, James, thanks for that question, um, and I think it's a it's a question that I think some most of us here could uh, pitch in in terms of uh, the the impact of uh, donor countries, civil society colleagues reaching out to embassies of other donor countries in their own countries. Um, um, I, I think um, one of the best ways that we could go ahead is um, if, like for example, um, UK colleagues can also pick up some of the key messages from the implementing countries and use that as well yeah, in their meetings with other donor embassies so that we can align our key messages um, and reinforce them as we go on. Um, in terms of media and communication, um, so uh, from GFAN AP, uh, AP side and from GFAN and GFAN Africa, I'm sure that we all our communication um, focal points will get together and work on the Global Week of Action communication. On the other hand, um, the com communication will also be um, uh, conducted by our country partners 
um, creating that voice at the country level, bringing in colleagues, um, uh, community, communities and civil society colleagues at the national level as well onto the same page, but um, creating that voice at the country level so that embassies of UK and other donor countries can see that taking place at the country level. Uh, a global press release is definitely very exciting. Um, and I think um, GFAN, GFAN Africa, GFAN Asia Pacific can lead on this um, and have all of you um, endorse the press release. We can do a sign on. Um, and perhaps something that we could also do is to see whether uh, when we need to place um, those activities, perhaps uh, a global press release could be more impactful down the line um, a few months after uh, the Global Week of Action, because uh, in 2019, uh, from GFAN Asia Pacific side, we also did like a last push towards the August in 2019. Um, so um, we can we can actually think of a global press release and a little bit of more communication as a last push. Um, look, just looking at how other donor countries are coming in, pitching in, looking at the early pledges and how everything is going on. Um, hope that helps, um, James. Um, uh, we had a call with you, and I'm sure we will be having a call with you again on the key messages. So um, please expect our communication with you um, soon. Thanks. Um, so, over to Peter. That's super helpful. Just to quickly uh, respond. Um, yeah, looking forward to chatting with you later um, on that. We're probably going to do a press release um, from the UK. Um, so if you could bring in like quotes and uh, examples of actions into, into this, what we were doing in early March, that would be good i know i haven't got much time left in the uh, call as well but if colleagues from other donor markets would be useful to get your perspective on whether it's useful for us in the uk to reach out to uh, other donors for meetings in london we have both the dual objective of getting them to put diplomatic pressure on the uk given the um situation we have in the uk right now and with the odor cuts and the very unlikelihood of getting a uh, level of funding that we need um, from the uk yeah, great. Um, just very quickly on that, James, um, we are currently putting together our web page um, for the Global Week of Action, where we will um, put all uh, everything that is happening around the around the countries as much as possible. Um, I'm not um, promising that we will be able to put everything, but we will try our best like last time to update it real time. Um, so when actions are happening in different countries, we'll try to uh, put all of that information there. Uh, but definitely we'll reach out to you with some of the key messages and key actions so that uh, it could go into your communication. Um, thanks, um, over to Peter. Uh, thanks, Niluka. I'm not sure if I can if you can hear me. I can. Uh, okay, um, so I just want a week of action. The last day is the second anniversary of uh, the declaration by the WHO as COVID-19 as an epidemic. Uh, pandemic, sorry. We are using that for an advocacy event here in uh, Germany. And I just wonder if you sort of uh, considered uh, taking this um, um, or using that, 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 that date for some advocacy messages or, uh, you know, you could talk about uh, COVID-19 resource mechanism and all what the Global Fund is doing, uh, just, just out of interest. And of course, as soon as our event uh, sort of uh, gets more clear, and if it's in English, I will uh, share that with you. Thank you. Um, thanks, Peter. Um, definitely, I, I think that sounds a really great opportunity. Once again, I think GFAN, GFAN Africa, and GFAN Asia Pacific, um, we, we can collaborate on um, a joint um, messaging, joint releases, or, or a joint event around that um, sort of a closure to the global week of action, uh, maybe, um, you know, um, and we'll definitely get back to you on that. Thanks so much for that suggestion. Thanks a lot, Nuka. Thanks a lot, Peter. Uh, we're running out of time. Uh, what I want to say quickly before closing the call is that uh, I think, as, as James said, it's, uh, we really hope that there will be a lot of grassroots efforts uh, during the week of action uh, at domestic level. To put pressure uh, to put pressure on the donor countries uh, but it's also in the same vein important to check with advocates in donor countries uh, to make sure that you align your messaging because uh, we want to make we know we don't want to have uh, to, we don't want to sp split the messaging in a sense and have you know uh, countries hearing one thing from the, ad from the advocates domestically and then hearing something else abroad so uh, it's important to be using to be using these calls and more generally reach out to make sure that, uh, that the messaging is aligned. Uh, thank you 
all to so much for being on the call with us today. Uh, I will just say before closing that uh, we, we, I meant to have another call in two weeks, uh, but it falls during the uh, one of the two days of a preparatory meeting. So pro probably, not certainly, but probably uh, cancel that. And so that means that our next call will be uh, the launch of a week of action on the 2nd of March. Uh, so we hope uh, you receive an invitation for that shortly. And we uh, are looking forward to see all of you there. We'll Talk about, we'll have a panel to talk about the investment case. Uh, we'll have a Global Fund Secretariat to uh, react to that panel and, and uh, present, present to us their work. Uh, and, and yeah, it's just going to be, it's going to be exciting. Uh, as, we, as we leave, uh, Tara, can we, can we put up uh, the video? So we'll, uh, if anyone wants to stay a little bit on the call for the next seven minutes, we'll be playing uh, the GFN speakers video we've put together. Uh, and uh, yes, yeah, so we for uh, where we can get a chance to have a look, uh, and you get to enjoy uh, Tara's, uh, Tara's computer spec. The Global Fund has saved lives and transformed communities for 20 years, but COVID-19 is devastating communities and health systems around the world. And for the first time since the Global Fund's founding, we lost ground in the fight against HIV, TB, and malaria. Our stories are the reasons why, in a COVID world, we must take bold and decisive action to fully fund the Global Fund. I spent almost like two years in depression and uh, thinking that what I'm going to do and where my life is heading. But uh, after two years, I remember I sat with myself and I scolded myself. I was like, Gautam, you are not dying. You, nothing is happening, so it's better you start working. So then that day I decided that now I should become a voice of people who are living with HIV and the LGBT community. And that's how my journey started. If not Global Fund, then who? Who is going to work? And if it is not you, who is going to fund? So this is my question to everybody. Like, if it is not you, who is going to do? When HIV and TB was combined together, mentally I was affected. I was isolated. I was discriminated. I was stigmatized. I will say I was dehumanized because that moment, that moment, that moment for me, living wasn't an option. Despite everything that happened, uh, today, today everything, my story is quite different. I've also seen a lot of transformation because beyond just Global Fund being part of saving me through antiretroviral therapy, ensuring that I have ARVs to take and be alive. Global Fund have given me an opportunity to be on that global decision platform where I can lend my voice to speak for many youth and many young people. We want to be understood that that is the hardest thing of our life, seeking the treatment and then have to continue the treatment. Me, as a woman, as a mother, and also a person that didn't want this happen uh, for me, but we cannot choose our destiny. I'm not be alive uh, without the investment and the support from the Global Fund. As the leading TB donor in my country, and I feel that moment the Global Fund will save my life. So the main message I want people to take away from this is that malaria is real and the impact it's having on lives is real. The people that are dying, that is real. Mothers in my country actually calculate the odds of their children surviving. So the impact that we are making 
when we are saving those lives is real. If it wasn't for the Global Fund, there's a very, very good chance that I would not be here today. So I would not be an entomologist fighting malaria today. And that is just one life. Think of the millions that have been saved and what they are doing today. So the problem we are battling, it is a real problem. And we are making a big difference when we do. The money that the Global Fund is putting into malaria control is making a difference. It is important. It's worth it because you cannot put a price on life and those lives are the future of the world. In 2015, my daughter was seven. It was a little girl and she doesn't know what has happened with, them, with, with her mother. It was hardly for us uh, because with your diagnosis, uh, comes fear because you uh, didn't know nothing about your disease but you see how people reaction around you we know how we can diagnose tuberculosis we know uh, how we can treatment uh, tuberculosis but we doesn't know how we can fight stigma around tuberculosis Tuberculosis never been priority questions for governments, for countries. And more years, every year, Global Fund help and financing for countries for their measures in, uh, with fight tuberculosis, HIV and malaria. On the 1st of July 2014, I fell very ill and I was taken to the hospital. And the doctors at the hospital at first glance declared that I should be like tested for HIV. And the test came out positive. Of course, um, just like everybody else, I went through the phase of struggling with accepting myself. So that is what really inspired me to be an advocate, to change people's notions, to change people's attitudes, and most importantly, to give a safe environment for people living with HIV. My main message is, is always simple, um, fully fund the Global Fund because some of us are here because the Global Fund is in existence. We are here because someone somewhere um, made that a contribution and someone somewhere ensured that the quality of life of people living with HIV is improved. We are here because of the Global Fund. We are living proof of the Global Fund's impact. There is so much more to do, which is why we ask you to take action and fully fund the Global Fund. Thanks a lot, everyone, for everyone who stayed. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm putting I put a link in the chat, the link to the to the full uh, to the full playlist with the short vignettes as well. Have a good afternoon, day, evening. Thanks for joining the call. Uh, yeah, bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks, bye everyone. And sorry, content for cutting you off when I hit play. <laughs> no, sorry, I would have done that to myself. You seem a bit tricky. <laughs>